Okay. I am. I am. I think I'm recording. Now it's being this. recorded. Aha. Uh -huh. Now it's recording, Doctor. And so the answer clearly is Z equals 2.97. End of lecture. I'm just kidding. <laughs> that was so brilliant, Dr. Gerald. Thank you for oh my all God, of oh my this. It Everybody was... tell the dean. Everybody tell the dean how brilliant I am. So, <laughs> so, um, so, uh, so when you when you just take a few data points, right, and you're measuring S, you're measuring the standard deviation. Here is a very good, very trick trick question for you. Is S, the measured value of standard deviation, equal to this thingy here, S equals sum of X minus X bar squared over N minus one squared of everything. Is that greater than or less than the true standard deviation sigma? And the first person to get that answer correct will earn themselves five points. Starts out as less than? Incorrect. Uh, it should start out as greater than, become- Incorrect. Greater. There should be no oh, change. Is it equal to? Incorrect. It depends. We don't know. Now the answer is yes. It is greater than or less than. Ah, gotcha. Is that why it's a trick question? No, not really, not really, not really, not really, right? Because when you just have a few scattered data points, they could be more, they could be more closely distributed or more, more widely distributed than the standard deviation of the data set, right? That was mean, I'm just gonna get meaner. That was super mean. Dr. Terrell, what, what is U and Sigma stands for in this line? Oh, okay, so mu is the mean. Mu is the most probable uh, measurement, right? It is, it's, it's, it's what you would describe as the real answer. You know, the answer. If you were God, you would know mu. Is anybody out here God? I did not think so. Oh, oh, sorry, Jonathan. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm in trouble again. <laughs> oh, geez. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm not. Okay. All right. So shutting up. So, um. See, I bowed to the. Anyway, shut up. So. So if you're not God, you do not know mu. And if you're not God, you also don't know sigma, right? Because those values are limited to someone who can count to infinity. If you're God, can you count to infinity? I'm not yes. Oh, God. Can, Kareem, can God count to infinity? I think so. So wait, what would be the last number he gets to? <laughs> no, a gazillion and one? So he's counting to a gazillion. See, or maybe that's still it's not affinity. Ah, 10 to a gazillion? Closer. 10 to 10 to a gazillion? <laughs> okay, so basically, I don't know. But if you make a gazillion measurements, you'll get mu, right? And if you make a gazillion measurements and you measure and you and you get and you record every value you know and, and the mean and everything you can calculate sigma but normally you, that never ever happens right so s so here's your here's your multiple choice s is greater than sigma s is less than sigma or s is greater than or less than sigma are you typing something dr taro i don't Think we can see it. I know, I know. I suck. I suck. Okay. I'm going to. I'm going to put a. Oh man, there's no stupid text box. Here we go. S is greater than sigma. S 
is less than sigma or s is less than or greater than sigma? Which of those is it? The last one. The last one. It's the last one, right. And you guys are going to remember this shit for some reason. I don't know why. If I knew why I'd be, I'd be a good teacher, but I don't know why. See, because we remember, we're actually going to remember this, even though it's almost completely irrelevant to our education. But the thing is that S is never equal to sigma, and it's always a little bit smaller or larger, right? So if we want, if we want to estimate our confidence interval, do uh, we use T, which is greater than S, or, uh, no wait, uh, T, which is greater than Z, or do we use Z? Okay, so this is completely unfair. But if we want to estimate our confidence interval, do we use T, which is greater than Z, or do we use Z? And this is a, a way of backing into something and then hearing the taillights crunch and then getting out and apologizing to the person you just backed into because I don't really know how to teach what I'm teaching. But if you want to estimate a confidence interval, right? What is a confidence interval? Da, 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 da. Is it a confidence interval like where on the curve you lie? Or not that, sorry. Um, how far away from the true mean you are? I like it. I like it. Anybody else? Anybody else confident in their confidence interval? Cindy, you can talk now. But she remains quiet. Uh, Meaning she doesn't- I, I tried to, yeah, add on to that. That was such a good statement. Uh, a confidence interval, until we're confident, we're pretty confident, we're somewhere in this interval. Right, 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 right. So a 95% confident interval means 95% chance that we, we got it right, more or less. Okay, so <laughs> what is, so Casey, what is we got it right? Um, it means that you're 95% confident that the true value of the mean is actually within those parameters. That's my guess. Exacto mundo, exacto. I like it. What did I just say, Van? Yes, yeah. Uh, you said that the confident interval, um, so the confident interval is expressing whether or not our true value is lie within those range? Yes, AKE yes, or any other values. yes, yes, yes. So far the clearest expression of the truth of this situation. And I do not know who said it. Because I was looking at Van and, and Fook answered, okay, oh, hi, Fook. I can't see you. I just see this picture of two people. It's me and my mom. Hi, Fook. Oh, that's you and your mom? Yes. Well, okay, that's nice. Um, oh, now you're gone again. Okay, all right, that's fine. So, um, so basically, it's a, it's a range within which you can say the mean is here and be right 95 times out of 100. OK, so how large do you need to make that range in order to be right 99 times out of 100? I think it needs to encompass like, oh, I'm sorry. It needs to encompass like, I think, 60% of the data. I like it. I like it. 
I can hear the gr the gears clicking, click, 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 click. They're barely turning, but yeah, <laughs> click, 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 click. If you heard my brain, it, it's it's like been stuck for about ten years. The guy goes click and then back, click and then back, and click and then back. Are there spiders in there? Uh, you know, I have not looked, but I I'm afraid to look. Definitely cobwebs. Could be spiders. Could be some pill bugs too. You guys want to look? Just kidding. <laughs> okay, so um, where was I? Okay, yeah, so we're kind of getting a clear on confidence interval, right? So it's really, do you actually know for sure that your the true mean is in within this range or no? No. No, it was only 95% sure right right you could still be wrong right and how do you say i could be wrong in court and not get thrown out you you 95 percent certain right right you don't use the word i could be wrong you use the word certainty and you can claim that you are 95 percent certain that the true value lies within these bounds and you can be correct, right? You can actually back that up statistically. Um, so, uh, and that's really all we're talking about here. You know, it's just like, um, so in order to make this, the confidence interval smaller, uh, here, let me, let me go to a blank slide here. Wait, Dr. Tarot, I just have a quick question, if that's okay. Yeah, please. So for the confident interval, is the mean value within the confident interval, is the mean value within those, those range? Does it, is it only mean value or it can be any unknown number that we're trying to solve for? I just want to clarify on that. That was like 17 questions, folks. Oh, that okay. was literally 17 questions. I'm so sorry. Yes. Yes, yes, that was 17 questions. <laughs> so now, Foop. Yes. Start with question number one. Um, let's see, the confident interval, uh, the mean value within the confident interval is, confident interval is a range, but the mean, oh, sorry. So the mean value lies within the confident interval Yes. So that means mean normally. Or okay, hold, hold on, hold on, shut up. I'm going to re rephrase your question. <laughs> it's the morning. And my I brain. Oh, I know, I know, I know, I know. Okay, is the mean value within the confidence interval? Somebody, uh, somebody other than Fook has to answer this. Somebody other than Fook named Casey, I'm clicking on today. Sorry, classmate. Um, Possibly. No, let Casey answer. <laughs> Too early for Casey. Too early for Casey, come on. Is the mean value within the confidence interval, yes or no? Yes. The true mean? No. Oh, two cases in class. Which of these three is correct? Yes, no, or maybe? Which Casey are you asking? The one who's talking to me. I don't know any okay. other case. There's another Casey in the class. Um, There's another Casey in the class? I know, I've never had that happen either. Wow. Um, we're 95% confident that it is. Okay, so yes, no, or maybe? Maybe. Exactly right. Maybe. Exactly right. Okay, cool. So, Fook, does that help? Yes, sir. No, it doesn't help. Let's see here. What is the chance that the true mean is in the Y percent confidence interval? 
Hope you answer this one. What is the chance that uh, it depends? It depends on whether or not we which Z. Uh, we... uh, no, no, no. Look at the question. What is the chance that the true mean is in the Y percent confidence interval? So it depends on the Y value. Yeah, and how does it depend on the Y value, dude? Uh, there is exactly a blank percent chance that the true mean is in true mean is in the Y percent confidence interval. Blank is equal to ninety-five. No, or whatever it depends. The it's the Y. Whatever number right. Y is. Right, it's Y. Yeah. Right, oh. it's Y, Y percent, Y percent. Oh, okay, okay. There's a Y percent chance that it's in the Y percent confidence interval. Oh. Why is am I saying this to everyone? Thank you so why? much. Got that it. makes it kind of good that I use Y as a variable. Okay, so that's all we're, that's all we're talking about here. So um, you let, me, let me change over. Let me change gears here a little bit. I'm going to change gears to um, a weird thing that I did recently. And this was, I looked through the notes and it's, it said to estimate, and I'm going to change this a little bit, right? It's, the notes said to estimate, uh, here, let's see. Uh, Uh, the notes said to estimate, ah, yeah, for many tosses of a set of 50 coins, probability theory predicts a mean of 25 heads and a standard deviation of 3.54. Okay, so probability theory, whatever the hell that is, estimated a mean of 3.54, right? And then... I didn't read this slide, but then I got down here and it said, test yourself. If 50 coins are tossed 400 times, how many times would you expect 32 or more heads to be expected, right? And like, I was completely flummoxed. You know, I did not know how to answer that. So I went and I thought, oh, I can dig something clever out of Excel, right? And I tried all kinds of functions and I didn't get anywhere, but, I set it up like this and I got an answer, okay? I want you guys to pay a little bit of attention here. This is not gonna be on the homework, but I might assign it as a special project later. So this, the data are here, right? Here are the data, Over, right? And in these cells, each one says the same thing. It's equal to the round of the rand and there's a zero, I don't know. Oh yeah, the, you, you give it zero decimals, right? So this is, has an equal probability of being zero or one, right? There's actually 400 uh, uh, rows and fifth and like something like 60 some columns here, right? And so I had to, I had to resort to this type of simulation in order to figure out um, how uh, how many times I expected um, to find a value between one ninety three and two hundred seven, right? They just they just made this arbitrary value seven around the mean value, which I'm taking to be two hundred here, right? Now the actual mean. The average that we get fluctuates. It's 198. Then I can do like F9, 200, 201, 198, 200. Can you guys see these numbers fluctuating? Yes, we can. So this is like, this is 400 times 50 is like, this is like 20,000 numbers, right? These are the statistics around 20,000 numbers, right? And so, um, you can see that the mean and the standard deviation are pretty consistent, you know, but still they vary by like about a percent every time. Oops. 
Can you see my finger? Oh, that's weird. Sorry. I have a weird laptop. It's a nose cam. So, um, so what I did was I, I just did the simulation and then I counted up, I took the average of standard deviation, right? And then I didn't even use the stupid average and standard deviation. I used the count if, okay? And the count if uses the sum of 400 rows, columns, rows, 400 rows. And it says, if that number is greater than 193, or if that number is less than 207, then, then add that value in, right? And, you know, it is completely, seems completely wrong to me. B409 to BZ409. Huh. So the, the average is outside of this range a whole bunch of times. Let's see how many times it's, it's, out, it's um, outside of that range. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna change the logic here from less than 193 to greater than 193 and then less than 297. Oops. Wait, no, I didn't change anything there, did I? I didn't change anything. I gotta change this from greater than to less than 193 and then greater than 207. Huh. That's weird. Did so it's and or or. This should be and. Count if should be and. So it can't be less than 193 and greater than 207. Hopefully that comes well, out to be right. zero. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> There's no single number that meets those criteria. <laughs> <laughs> but not in any counting system I use. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, okay, so let's let's do let's do count if. And let's let's do this one. And then we'll do um Yeah, because that's an anding function, right? Exact amino. Now we want to do greater than 207. Yeah. So it's not really working because I think it's because I've hidden all the rows and columns. Something kind of weird happens there. Maybe. No, didn't change anything. Let's see here. Let me unhide these columns. Hmm. 41 plus 14 plus 16. No, that's actually probably correct. Yeah, that's that that number should stay constant there. Oh geez. <laughs> There's something wrong here. Anyway, this is how we would start doing a simulation. Is you 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 simulate each event, right? And this is this should be 50% probability being a one or a zero. And it's it's close because the average is 200 out of 400. And the standard deviation there is 10. And we don't need probability theory to get there. So this is how I did it. And I used count if. 
Oh, I see. That's the problem right there. Let's see here. Now, huh. it still fluctuates. Less than 193. Oh no, it should be greater than 207. Okay, well, anyway, ah, that was a fail. But in any, anyhow, this is how you would, how you would actually do this in practice in sort of a data, data science enterprise. You simulate it and you count the number of results that are, that meet the criteria that you're looking for. So, um, I think I'm pretty much out of gas here. Um, there is a homework on this subject. And why don't y'all give a try for the homework and then see how you do. And then um, I'll take any questions you have now. This is all posted on, on the web. And um, let's wrap it up for today. And let's say we'll do up to standard deviation of the mean. I don't know. This should all be review, but you know, I know it's not review. Um, here's the confidence interval. So T, um, let me just make one last point here. It's about T versus Z. So uh, for whom, for how many of you does that distinction mean anything? T and Z. Maybe. Isn't Z testing for like two-tailed type of distribution? Uh, that's a good point, but no. Uh, T and Z are both, can be, both can be one or two-tailed. Oh, okay. Um, the, uh, Z, Z is the, it's, it's the proportion of the total area of a normal, distribution, right? And it's, you start at the mean, and you go out Z standard deviations, and that gives you a fixed portion of the area, right? So if you have to go, if you want a 95% confidence interval and you're using Z statistics, right? It's not very common, but then what you do is you would find the area that encompasses 95% of the answers, right? And you would use that Z value to multiply your standard deviation by. Normally, however, you use T. T is larger than Z. T is always larger than Z. And so around the standard deviation, you have to go T multiples, or I'm sorry, around the mean, you have to go T multiples of the standard deviation to get to a given confidence interval. So let's look at a T table here. Let me just sort of peruse it here, right? Um, let's focus on 95% here, right? And degrees of freedom being one, et cetera, right? So um, if you have one degree of freedom, now let's just say we're just averaging numbers together you have one degree of freedom, that means you have two data points. So um, what that means is there's sort of, um, there's really only one way to get at the answer there, right? Take A plus B divided by two and that's your mean. So that doesn't leave you much freedom. And if you got these two points and you wanna develop a confidence interval around them, you need to go out 12 standard deviations in either direction from the mean in order to be 95% sure 
that the true value is in that mean, right? Now, all you need to do is make the measurement one more time. And that value drops down to four right here. Right? And so this is, this is the, of, of, of anywhere in the, in the table, this is the biggest bang for the buck, going from one degree of freedom to two, or from two measurements to three, right? And, um, you know, like, uh, so this is uh, N equals two for average. Oops. If you're just doing averages, that means n equals two, right? And this means n equals three, et cetera, right? So that's the biggest bang for the buck. Now, if you were to look at the Z table, the Z table doesn't have a degrees of freedom on it, right? Z assumes you've you've done all your homework and you know exactly what the standard deviation is. But T, T assumes that there's, uh, assumes there's uncertainty in, in, in the standard deviation. Does that make sense? Because that's, that's like a, that's like a, um, Thank you. That's like a, uh, that's what I'm going to use to defend myself with the Dean when you go for your tuition refund. I'm going to say, but I said that the value of T assumes there is, there is uncertainty in the standard deviation. So that's like a, that's like a um, B plus A minus or A minus A distinction for y'all. If you really get this, then you're in, then you're in good shape. Hmm. Okay. I have bored everyone to death. Dr. Terrell, so what you're trying to say, uh, teach is uh, what are you? Oh, me, sorry. The so the degree of freedom is. Um, the number of average and minus one. That's the key idea takeaway for the slides, along with the confident level percentage. And everything else I've said. Okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, Dr. Terrell. Pull, 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 pull. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. I'm just joking. Oh. I'm just, joking. <laughs> just joking. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm weird like this. I'm weird like this. You'll get used to me, maybe. It's okay, I like it. <laughs> so. Thank you, sir. So there's really, what I'm trying to do here, is I'm trying to wrap up a few ideas about the uh, confidence interval. And the confidence interval normally uses a value called student's T, right? Now, who was, student was a guy named Lewis Gossett who worked for the Guinness Brewery. That part you're never gonna forget. The next part, which is the important part, you're gonna forget almost the instant that we, that I stopped talking about it. And the part that you're gonna forget is that students T assumes that there is uncertainty in the standard deviation. Therefore, it's larger than Z. Have you forgotten it yet? You should repeat it one more time so we don't forget it. Okay. I'm gonna repeat it again and you're gonna forget it again. I predict, I predict. The value of students T assumes there is a uncertainty in the standard deviation. Therefore it's larger. Oops, T is larger than 
z. So z, z, is, z is the proportion of area under the normal distribution. And t is the proportion of area under the, uh, the t distribution or the student's distribution. Is there anything that particularly defines what the normal distribution is? Yes. The normal distribution is, oops, sorry. Where is it here? Is um, it's the it's the negative exponential of the square of the deviation. So it's e to the minus x minus mu squared divided by two sigma squared, right? So x minus mu squared is always positive, right? Right, Kareem? Kareem, oh, yeah. you sort of disappeared there, there you are. Sigma squared is always positive, right? So the negative of the positive over the positive is always what? Negative. Right. So e to the e to the minus x here. This is e to the minus z, really, right? So this is this value here is sort of like probably this is probably z right here. Um, this is the square root of z, something like that. And this value here is always going to be negative. So when z is zero, the function is at its maximum. E to the zero is one. Right, so this guy here is one over a root two pi sigma. Right, then as you move away from this, it drops off really quickly, right? Because as this gets larger, that square grows, and e to the minus of the square, you know that that grow that that vanishes really quickly, right? Okay, sure. thank you. Absolutely. So is there anyone else for whom I could make a, a simple question complicated? Uh, Dr. Terrell, I wanted to ask. Yes. For the lab groups, I saw that uh, on any given day, there was a group A and B. How can we tell if which group we're in? Um, there's a, there's a, an experiment we're going to do, and we're all going to wear a post-it note on our forehead. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. Um, uh, I, I'm just going to have to assign everybody. I think probably it's be alphabetical, but I don't actually know for sure yet. Uh, but I, I will. I will sort of assign you. There's there's like three more people I have to let in. I think. Okay. It's going to be like 34 out of a maximum, absolute theoretical maximum of 36. And by doing this, I am decreasing the odds that I get to teach this class in the fall, which means I'm increasing the odds that I have to teach something stupid like Chem 1B Lab or something like that. <laughs> stupid and laborious. You have no idea how much grunt work is involved in those labs. Or maybe you do. Brandon, are you teaching a lab? I am not teaching a lab, no. You're not teaching a lab. Who, who here in this audience is teaching a Chem 1A or a Chem 1B Lab? Nobody, it is a ton of work. It is a bleep ton of work. And nobody ever wants to do that. But because I'm a stupid guy, I am volunteering, voluntarily taking too many people because I have to graduate. Boo hoo, I have to graduate this spring. I'm just kidding, it's kind of serious. <laughs> people's lives depend on it so um but um i'm taking extra people this spring so that and so there's less likelihood that i'll be able to teach this over tomorrow uh, in the in the fall but in any case um so the the you know one way to think about what we're what a confidence interval is it's a little bit like a standard deviation of a mean right if you get a mean value, you kind of want to know how it's going to fluctuate. 
it will fluctuate like the standard deviation of an individual measurement divided by the square root of n measurements. I don't know, that's probably not too helpful. Sorry, it means something to me. Okay, um, all right, so that's enough it for today. means something to you. Yes, it means something to me. Therefore, someday it will mean something to you too. And it may mean that you're gonna try to get your tuition back. But, so um, I, I've overstayed my welcome. Um, there is, uh, well, let me go to Canvas here and I'll just show you like where to get to the, the homework here. So here is, here is what you see, right? Oh my God, this is horrible. Zoom invites, that should be here. Green sheet lab manual. And I can see now why you're having trouble finding the... Macmillan Learning under home on the left. Go to Macmillan Learning and then it's there. Yeah, right. Yeah, you're gonna gotta go here to get sapling and do all this other stuff. It should show up in the, in the grade book though, you know? So I don't know how to make the... the the student view look any particular way, you know? I just know how to make my view look. So if I leave the student view, this is my view, you know? And it's like, oh, there's the links to the PowerPoint. Oh, I could just gotta publish that, stupid person. This is much more organized than you. I don't know how to get you guys organized. As I say, that looks nice. I know, I know, doesn't <laughs> it? It's not just all blah, everything all everywhere, so. I just don't know how to do it, but I'll figure it out. Okay, guys, thank you so much. I've overstayed my welcome. I really, really appreciate your attention. Um, I'll do problems next time. I, I have a document camera. It's just not really set up. So that will be helpful. You know, it won't be as deadly boring as today. I promise. I promise it won't. Okay? Everybody okay? Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks, for... Dr. Terrell. Dr. Terrell, may you stay for a few minutes? I just have a quick, quick questions, a few questions before we go. You have 17.5 million questions. <laughs> so, okay. so actually, yeah, so I'll stay back, stay back a, a few minutes and I'll answer books questions, but I am going to I'm gonna take every single one of Fook's questions, I'm gonna write it down and I'm gonna make it available to everyone. Is that okay with you, Fook? Sure. Or copywriting your questions. That's fine. So for the homework, I see that, is it possible? So I was wondering, each homework is 100 points, but then like the syllabus says that homework is worth 200 points. Yeah. So are you taking the average for everything, sir? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't, it's not going to be worth 100. It's probably going to be like, um, I'll add them all up and I'll div divide by that number and multiply it by 25 or by 200, right? So don't worry. It'll all, in the end, it'll all only be worth 200. Totally. Oh. Wait, let's see. Yes, yeah, oh. don't worry. Don't worry. I, I promise I can normalize it. Okay. And then I was wondering, is it so? How do we access the homework, uh, Doctor Terrell? So we go to for Macmillan Learning. Yeah. Like, which site do we go to? Um. Three well, sites. You know, there's. I don't really know. I mean, it's like when I set it up. You go to assignments and then you said load, load chapter four in a new window and it's like, there it is. It's like chapter four homework, bump, 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 like this, you know? And then you get them, you know, and these are easy. These are easy questions, you know? And then Wait, how many get, questions are there, Dr. Terrell? 10,000. Oh. Yeah, just 10,000 though. It should only take you all week, working night and day. 15. I'm sorry, no, there's 15, there's 17 total questions. 
And some of them are, are multiple choice. The last ones are a little harder because you got to do a little bit of work. But. How many guesses do we get? What? How many guesses do we get at the right yeah. answer? You actually, you get, you get infinite guesses, I think. I think you can just <laughs> guess over, and over, and over and over. Yeah, yeah, you can just keep, you can suck up your entire day doing this stuff. Um, Will it dock us points if we guess, uh, if it takes us a little bit longer, if we just keep guessing? Um, let me know what you find. I don't think so. I don't think okay, so. Okay, because I know I've had that in the past for some things like yeah. Apple, I, like other online things as well. So just curious. I, I think that depends on how the professor sets it up. Yeah, so. usually I think oh, defaults, like you can... I yeah. think it caps at 80% or I think even may, at worst 75% yeah, after like five tries or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't think I have anything too sadistic in here, but it could be. I don't really know because I've, this is the second time I've used this and it's like, I'm. they just throw me in here too. I, I don't know how to use this crap, <laughs> you know? But I think it's good because it's like it gives you something to focus on between lectures, you know? You can tell that I'm totally disorganized, but this is sort of organized, so. Okay, I think if we follow the link to the homework from Canvas, it will automatically put us in his class on sapling. So we should be good for us to find the homework. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't. <laughs> I think you'll probably find it. It worked in Chem 55 last semester. And that was less organized than it is today. Oh, I see. Okay. Swear so count is up to four. I don't believe that. I think it's probably five or six, but <laughs> count the extra credit. Excellent. 0.25. So that's one full point for today. I'll make a note of that. Okay. All right. I got to go, guys. It's, um, it's not fair for me to go on after because other folks have things. I am here, 12.30 to 1.30. Just log in the same URL, everything, and I'll put that on Canvas, everything like that. And um, uh, I'm, I'm here, I'm here. I will sit down, I will get a, another cup of coffee and I'll be here at that point for Q&A. If you ever need to talk to me, send me an email and I'll be there. Professor, do we have class on uh, next Wednesday? No, no class next Wednesday. Only Tuesday, Thursday until February 15th. Lab? No, we, do, we don't have lab on in class person lab on Wednesday. No, lab does not start till February. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, it's a county rule. Yeah. I thought lab was on March 16 or something, the first lab day. March 16th? I think so. That's what in the syllabus. I think it's supposed to be yeah. February 15th, but okay. Let me check that out. I'll check that out. I'll, it might I'll... be a due date, though, I think. Yeah, it says March 16th. At worst. <laughs> <laughs> March. That's my bad. I'm so sorry. It should say February. It's confused. Yeah, it's Oh, so something that occurred to me that we were already off topic, so I figured I'd just save it for the end. I think I know why you might have been getting those fluctuations. You were looking at the hits below 193, greater than 207, and between 193 and 207. Yeah. What about yeah. equals? Oh, right. Right, because they're... That's a good point. So, you know, maybe there were like three of them one time and like five the next. You know, it wouldn't have been a big difference, but I think that's why we were seeing just, yeah, those small fluctuations. I think you're probably exactly right. You're probably exactly right. Let me check that out and I will get back to you next time. Okay, so, Dr. Paul, homework is more, is mainly like participation and learning the concepts. We get many tries, right, sir? And we won't be deducted points. For, for no, no, no point deduction for many tries. Just keep oh. trying until you get them all right. Oh, I see. And then, wait, which, okay. Does anyone know which website we go to? Because the sapling is like, there's three websites to it. And I'm not sure. You just oh. go in the assignment. It'll, it'll say load this assignment in like a new thing. If you click on it, it'll just send you right to it. I've 
I've used Sapling for yeah. a lot of classes. So yeah, if you just click on the homework assignment, it'll, it'll just have that load a new tab. Just click on it and it'll send you right to it. And if you don't have it yet, it'll give you the prompt saying that you have to sign up for it. Yeah. Yeah, I go to chapter four homework. If you Thanks. can find this, let me. I can uh, if you go to assignments, it's easy to find. Okay. Yeah, I go to assignments here. Yeah, there we go. I'm in. Chapter four homework, click here, and it'll say loaded in a new window, et cetera. I yes. think. Hopefully. Yeah. Yeah, I think what I just I clicked on the Macmillan Learning, and then there's like that sapling whatever header. You can actually click on that, and that took me to the sign up page too. Yeah, yeah. To take your money. To take my money, yeah. To take your money. I'm sorry about that. I just had to do it this time. I and never did. Also, I'm doing on this online bullshit. But did anyone sign up for sapling? And there's a link to it, right? There's a link to it, like uh. Like it links to back to our SGSU Canvas account. Yeah, I yeah. I, I clicked on it from here, and now when I go in, it says you know Terrell one fifty five whatever. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you, Cin Cindy. Did it? Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I will thank be back you. here. Okay. Day at 12.30 and then tomorrow and then Tuesday at 7.30. Thank you so much, sir. Hey, guys.